It's your boy Guru from Steiny and Guru, noon to three, right here on 95.7 The Game. Now back to the morning roast. I'm a roaster because these two guys are my guys. Yin and Yang, right here on 95.7 The Game. What up, Goo? Wonder how he's feeling after the Cowboys bowed out. He's still wearing his Cowboys gear, though, so much respect to him. As this segment is sponsored by Golden State, serving the Bay Area. For three generations, when you succeed, we succeed. Visit go to statelumber.com. Uh, look, man, we got Sean King on. Former quarterback, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Does his thing in the media. Very articulate. I love his breakdowns. I love his insight on the game of football. And he was one of five rookies to start in a, in the a title game, uh, in a championship game. And we all know that a rookie has to come out celebrating in those title games. So we want to kind of get... What Brock Birdie is going through as a rookie. So let's talk to Sean King. He joins us on the morning roast here, courtesy of the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Sean, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm excellent, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. And and we remember that Rams game that you played uh, uh, you, against playing against the Rams, excuse me, uh, as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers starting quarterback. You guys lose 11-6. to six. It was a hard-hitting football game. What was it like for you, though, as a rookie playing in that football game? Because I remember the week before you guys played Washington, you come back and rally to get to that point. Just take us through the week of preparation as a rookie going through this. Uh, I think it's a little different now because uh, it, that was 1999. It might have had spilled over into 2000 mm-hmm. by that point. But, I mean, you couldn't even text from your cell phone. <laughs> Like, there there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, like, there was no, I mean, the internet used to be like a dial-up service in most places, <laughs> yeah. so I just say that to say you were a little more insulated. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't go check your phone and, like, all the articles pop up, you know, when you, you did, when you drove home, I mean, you, did, you just didn't know. The world was a bigger place mm-hmm. in 99 than it is now, so I'm sure Brock is dealing with a lot more you know, just because the world is smaller with social media and, and with the ability for people to, like, communicate and get their messaging out and everybody hear it. So, you know, for me, it, it was all about the Rams' offense at the time. They called it the greatest show on turf mm-hmm. for those people that may not be familiar with it. And our defense, which a lot of people thought was the best they had ever seen. Uh, ultimately, we have three Hall of Famers off that defense and a, potentially another one because uh, John Lynch, the GM right. uh, there in San Fran, Warren Sapp, Derek Brooks, all already in the Hall of Fame, and Rondé Barber uh, has been a finalist. So, you know, that was the conversation that week. For me, I was able to actually stay under the radar. And, you know, you look back on it, I was the first rookie ever to do it. And I don't really remember a whole lot of questions about that. Huh. So I don't even know if people knew. that's interesting so what do you think the biggest misnomer is uh in this situation because i feel like we all pivot like oh we got to see him do it this week and then you know the he beats brady and then it's the next week it's it's a different test and the week after that it's a different test you got to do it on the road do it in the playoffs do it on the road in the playoffs but what's the biggest misnomer that you think is just kind of foolish that you hear the media talk about when it comes to rookie quarterbacks in the playoffs oh that the game's going to be too big. You know, I, I think the one advantage that, you know, Brock has, that I had, was we've never failed in that position before. So the anxiety is going to be with his teammates because they've been to three of these games in the last four years and don't have a ring. So, like, they're the ones that kind of can see, man, we got to get this done. Like, our window is closing. Like, for some of the Niners elite players, this may be the difference between them being a Hall of Famer and not. So, like, that sense of urgency creates anxiety, creates, like, that that, that nervous energy. It's probably more prominent with them than it is with Brock. Brock's just a kid from Iowa State that thought he was drafted too late. Mm -hmm. He he was frustrated on draft day because he thought he was better than all those bums that were in front of him. (laughs) And and now he's getting a chance to prove it. So, I mean, he's he's confident. You can tell him the way he plays. You know, now the thing is, once he gets there, sometimes you have an out-of-body experience, guys. And he had it a little bit in the Seattle game. I had it in the Washington game Mm -hmm. where I was talking, but I didn't really know what I was saying. (laughs) 
Like I threw the ball and I really could not control where it went. So, you know, I've said this a couple times, uh, and I hope he's gotten it. I the finger is is your best friend. Like when I got to the sideline after that first drive, I stuck my finger down my throat and made myself dry heave. And it snapped my body back into normalcy. Like Willie Beeman? Yes, like the craziest thing ever. And after that I was fine. Really? That's that's incredible. Yep. Had you ever done that before at any other level? I hadn't. And I, and I was on my last resort. I had poured water on my head. I had drunk water. I had slapped myself in the face. Like, I, I did everything I could do. And I'm just telling you, I wasn't in control of my movements. <laughs> and so uh, I, 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 that was the last resort. And it worked. And, man, look, I'm telling you, that's the, that's the greatest secret most pro athletes don't know. <laughs> John wow. King on the morning rose on 95 7 the game won the Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of course played with the Tampa Bay Bucks uh you still are you still coaching running back to South Florida right now Is that what no you I actually have a television show I live in Las Vegas now okay. um Brent Musburger owns the uh sports uh betting network called Vison. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 yep yeah so we're on Vison prime time three to six Pacific Monday through Friday so okay. I'm doing that now. Uh, I, this will be my second year uh, hosting this uh, talk show. Okay, wow. okay. So, so when you look at Brock Purdy, because um, we were, you know, when Jimmy Garoppolo went down in the Miami game, I'm thinking, oh boy, season's over. Brock Purdy really coming out of Iowa State. But what was your impressions of him coming out of Iowa State? Because he had to skip the beat. Heck, he's taking this offense to another level, Sean. Well, it was weird because he actually was a pretty good prospect, and then him and his teammates has completely tanked their senior year at Iowa State. I mean, I remember they came into that season, multiple guys on preseason All-American lists. Uh, Brees Hall, who probably would have been rookie of the year if he didn't get hurt for the Jets. He was mm-hmm. having a tremendous start to his season. Uh, they, they didn't play well, and I think that really impacted Brock on draft day because the senior film wasn't good, but... When I watch the Niners from afar, uh, Coach Shanahan believes more in Brock Purdy than he ever did Garoppolo or Trey Lance. Yeah, we believe that. You can just tell from the way he calls it that he trusts Brock. That Brock is like, if he could draw up the perfect quarterback, it's Brock. Like, I think he loves Garoppolo's quick release and, and his ball location at times, but I don't think he loves the mental toughness of, of, of Garoppolo in, in, in pressure situations. I don't think he loves that, that Jimmy is not really a great athlete. He's not going to extend plays. You know, I think he loves Trey Lance's athleticism, but Trey's just raw. Like, he hadn't played. He hadn't had a whole lot of snaps. So to think that a raw, you know, inexperienced quarterback can come into a we're a Super Bowl-caliber team and develop, it, it, that's just tough. You know, because he doesn't get a chance to fail without the scrutiny. So Brock kind of is the medium. Like, he's got that quick release. Mm. He's pretty accurate. He has great functional mobility. Like, he doesn't, that doesn't get talked about enough. Like, I know he doesn't run for a whole lot of yards, but, man, he's pretty good at, you know, avoiding the pass rush, extending plays, you know, creating stuff downfield off script. There's so much that goes into quarterback play and evaluating quarterback play. We fall in love with height, weight, speed arm strength, all those things. What are the things that you look for early on, whether it's at the pro level or the college level, where you're like, oh, this guy has it? Well, I just got a unique gift. I had Justin Fields as the best quarterback in that draft. Um, I thought Trevor Lawrence, you know, eventually was going to be something special, but I hated the fact that Urban Meyer was the head coach of Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, situation so matters. I, so yeah. I downgraded Trevor because of that. And luckily for Trevor, it only lasted a year. Right. Uh, hats off to Mr. Khan. He didn't get stubborn. He was like, I know this is a catastrophe. He could see it. He was <laughs> honest. And look at what Trevor did with Doug Peterson. Right. Yes. Uh, yep. I said Zach Williams, Wilson. I don't know why they drafted him. Like, I don't know what the Jets are doing. They're still recovering from that. And I didn't like what Sam Fran did with Trey Lance for all the reasons I just mentioned. Not because I don't think Trey eventually will be a good player, but he was never going to succeed in San Fran. Uh, a guy that's inexperienced, that hadn't thrown a lot of balls, he can't operate in that pressure cooker where the team feels like it's a Super Bowl caliber team. He would have needed to go somewhere where they had no expectations. He could have thrown 25 picks the first two years and nobody cared as long as he was getting the reps and they thought he was going to be good in year three.
L- wow. l- can I get in there on the because like, you brought up like kind of the the team around the quarterback? Take me through your experience when you're coming in and you have all these Hall of Famers. Right. These guys want to win now. Pressure cooker of we have this great defense. We don't want it to go to waste. We're trying to capture a Super Bowl. Like, what's that like as the quarterback, whether rookie or not? And, and you're dealing with all of these egos and you're trying to win and balance everything out. That feels so ridiculously difficult and hard for the average fan to even understand well it's interesting because it's kind of the gift and the curse i'm on your show today because of that opportunity but i probably didn't play 10 15 years because of that opportunity hmm. you know and we're talking a completely different nfl you know if you look at our my two lane team that went undefeated in 1998 you know well, i set the all-time passive history yeah. record I mean, we were a spread team, majority shotgun. I mean, we were running the system that you see prominent now right. in 98. Mm-hmm. And I get to Tampa, and the entire NFL is under center. There's a fullback in the game, a tight end in the game. I mean, it's all about physicality, running the football. You know, that's why uh, the St. Louis team was so unique because they were one of the few teams that were, like, throwing the ball. So, for me, it just was – so much pressure because we were always in third and six. Right, right. <laughs> first down, I was the, I was the best hand the ball to Mike all start work done guy on first and second down <laughs> the, the league had ever seen. <laughs> Sean King here well, on the he Bud Light guest line. Them. No, you, you, you're dropping not a, a lot of knowledge. I remember wow. that too late team, man. You guys were fun to watch winning that Liberty Bowl. And then you got, you, obviously, you go to Tampa Bay and Brad Johnson comes in, but you're a part of that roster here. How do you see this game playing out Sunday, though? Jalen Hurts on I, the other side, another guy who was kind of disrespected coming into the league. You know, left Alabama being replaced by Tua Tunga Vailoa. Goes to Oklahoma, has a great season under Lincoln Riley. But people thought, eh. Maybe a backup. How do you see this game playing out between those two quarterbacks and both these teams? I, I think Jalen Hurts hadn't gotten enough uh, credit. If he doesn't win MVP, that's going to be a travesty. I mean, uh, he was the front runner, and then he got injured and missed a couple games, and people are holding that against him, it looks. But he is a finalist, so I hope he wins it. I mean, what a year. Mm-hmm. People forget that coming into this season, a lot of people thought Gardner Minshew should be the quarterback in Philly. And, and so for him to go out and, and, and not blink, I mean, it just speaks to how mentally tough he is. Super talented. I'm pulling for him. But I go back, and if you guys want a game that I think is, is a great um, point of context, go watch the Washington Commanders and what they did to the Eagles running yeah. the football when mm-hmm. they beat them in the regular, second half of the regular season. Mm-hmm. And I just know what Coach Shanahan and his ability to scheme – you know, a run game, you know, and he's the best in the league at that. I think San Fran is going to expose what's really the deficiency of the Eagles, and that's that run defense. I think this is a fourth-quarter game. I'll say this. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Tar Char- 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 Ward. Ward. Yeah, Mooney Ward. He, gets to say, he likes to be called Mooney, Sean. <laughs> Mooney, Mooney. I respect because he's not playing in the postseason like he played in the regular season. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem confident. He's giving up underneath catches without contesting the catch. He's getting beat deep. DK Metcalf had his way with him. So that's a, a matchup I would watch if he ends up on A.J. Brown. And then uh, can that front four get pressure? Yeah. Because for, for as good as Bosa was in the regular season, for good as the front four was for overwhelming teams with their pass rush, they have not been as dominant in these two playoff games. So uh, if they can't get pressure on Hurts, that's going to be an issue. But I do think in the end, San Francisco has enough. Uh, I trust Coach Shanahan way more than I trust Coach Sirianni. Sirianni just, he looks like one of those guys that that thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Mm. And this isn't just about the Eagles winning the NFC. This is about him proving that he's the smartest guy in the room. And I think he's going to mess up at some point. Game management, decision being too aggressive, you know, trying to, to do something that makes people go, wow. And I think it's going to make people go, uh-oh. Man. So I've got Niners 24-21. I love that. Sean, I love that. can you promise us you'll come back on again? Yeah. Because you are, like, it's just I love someone who's actually tapped in and pays attention and is giving us nuggets of truth on both their own playing career and what's really going on in the NFL now. You were really good today. 
Thank I you. I appreciate it, man. Go Niners. Bang, Hell bang, yeah. nine again. Let's I love go. that, Sean. Go Let's ahead. That go. was good stuff, man. Really good stuff, man. We're, hey, we're going to check your show out, too, in Vegas, man. Hell you yeah. really, really respect wow, there, man. That was great. a lot of stuff. Good stuff there. Sean King, Bud Light Guest Line. Of course, everybody joins us here on the po- all postseason guests, excuse me, appear on the Bud Light Guest Line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. You